Hello and welcome to another Drive Teams tutorial. In this one we will focus on the image element, more exactly how the image element works and how to use all the available options in order to get the most out of it. So first things first, open your page or post and then simply drag and drop the image element to your canvas from the right sidebar. Once you do that the image library opens right up and you can choose a picture from here. If your image is not already uploaded to your media library, go ahead and upload it from here. The image that I want to use is this one, so I'll just go ahead and select it and click on insert into post. As you can see, the main options of the element have appeared in the left sidebar and we'll see how each of them works. So let's start off with the main options. The first thing you can do here is to decide what type of image you want. You can choose between a static image and a dynamic one. We'll first go through the options available for the static type and later on we'll see how to use the dynamic feature. So right under the element type you have the option of replacing the already chosen image. If you click here the media library will open right up on the screen once more and you can choose another image. Next you can tick this box if you want to display a full size image on click. And what this means is that your image will most likely be uploaded on your page in a smaller size but if you tick this box the image will render in its full size when clicked. Then you can use these two sliders or these two fields to adjust the size and height of your image. If you're not satisfied with the changes so far, you can always use this button from here to reset to the default size. Moving on, you can click here to define a style for your image. As you can see, you have a variety of options you can choose from. You can apply frames to your pictures or maybe apply rounded corners or turn it into a circle. This is entirely up to you. I will go ahead and select a dark frame for this image. You can also give it a title if you want. I'm gonna delete the already existing text and type in a new one and then after your page is saved and previewed whenever you hover over the image this text will appear as well. You can also type in an alternative text and this will help your site's visitors who can see the image understand what this image is about. Next switch on this toggle if you want to add a caption after you do that the caption text can be included right here. And lastly, activating this toggle will allow you to add a link to your image. Now we do have a separate article which explains in detail what each of these options does and I've linked this article here. Now let's go back to the top of the main options and see what features are available for the dynamic type. So I went ahead and simply selected this dynamic button and you can see that I have here a drop down list and here I can choose where the image should be imported from. The first option of the drop down list is the featured image one. Keep in mind that if you want to display your image right here, you first have to make sure that you have set a featured image from your WordPress admin dashboard. The next option from the dynamic source is the author image one. This option will import the image that the author of the post or page has previously set. Here as well, you first have to make sure that the author image has been set in your WordPress admin dashboard and the process for doing that can be found in this article from our knowledge base. The user image is the last available option from the drop down list. This source will be available only if you have previously set a user image in your Gravatar account and if you have followed the steps described in this article then you should be able to choose the image source like I just did. Once you do that the image will change and display the user image set in your Gravatar account. As you have noticed both my author image and my user image are the same so this is the reason why you are seeing the same image right here but normally if you have different images for your author and user one then the one displayed here will be different. The options below the dynamic type are just the ones described earlier for the static type. We next have the more general options that you can use with almost any Thrive Architect element. But you can also notice that there's one additional section here specific to the image element and it's the image effects one. You can modify the grayscale if you want, the opacity and of course the blurness simply by dragging these sliders. Just as well you can use the brightness effect to lighten or darken the image, adjust the contrast or apply a CPI effect to your image. Further on you can use the invert effect meaning that the dark areas will become bright and vice versa 
and you can also increase or decrease the intensity of the colors from the saturation slider. Use the Hue Rotate option to give your image a tint of a certain primary color and last but not least we have the overlay effect right here so i'm just gonna go ahead and switch on this toggle and then this option will allow you to overlay a color on top of your picture clicking here will open the color picker and i can go ahead and then simply give this image a tint of a certain color that i want Lastly, use the reset to default button if you want to simply revert to your initial image. This concludes our tutorial about how to use the image element in Drive Architect. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful, but don't forget to check out other tutorials available in our knowledge base if you want to learn more.